Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is the general manager of the Memphis Redbirds, Craig Unger. <laughs> The 2014 saw major changes to the Memphis Redbirds organization, the biggest being new ownership after the team was purchased by the parent club, the St. Louis Cardinals. Among the changes in the front office was the arrival of the new general manager in Craig Unger. With years of experience working in St. Louis with the Cardinals corporate sales, Unger gained the knowledge, experience and leadership skills needed to run a team. Now it's time for his second year with the Redbirds, although only his first full season heading up the show in Memphis. And here in 2015, there are more major changes. And these changes will have more of an effect on the team's fan base because these changes are to the Redbirds' home, AutoZone Park. A multi-million dollar off-season facelift was done to the zone. And the changes have been met with nothing but favorable results. Tonight is opening night for the Redbirds as they face the Iowa Cubs, where fans will get a chance to enjoy the changes firsthand. And here to give us a sneak peek at what everyone can expect to see this season, both with the stadium and the team, is Redbirds general manager Craig Unger, who joins me next on Sports File. Craig, great to have you on the program again. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Last Friday night, Cardinals, Redbirds, Mother Nature, she came through. And it was a well-attended game, as you would expect. What are your thoughts of the Cardinals and Redbirds getting together? And how did the fans enjoy themselves Friday? Because I'm sure you had a chance to get out there and talk to a lot of them. Yeah, I think, I think having these exhibition games and this type of thing, it's, it, it's a great thing. Because you have players like Randall Gritchick, who just like in the middle of the year, you know, towards the end of the year last year, he's just gone. You know, and the, the, the fans here enjoy seeing these guys. They see these future prospects, but then one day they come to the ballpark and they're gone. And, you know, do you ever get a chance to see them again? It's a chance for Randall, for Adam Wainwright, and Matt Carpenter, who, who we had throw out first pitches, for the fans here to really recognize them as being a part of the community and what they did of coming through Memphis, and then sort of appreciating them as coming through Memphis and now being in St. Louis. I, I, think, the, I think the games are great. Um, I think the fans had a great time. I've talked to a number of them that night and even after the fact, got lots of emails and things on Twitter from them that, you know, it's just, it's really special when you have the big club down here. And in that intimate setting of AutoZone Park, you really can't beat it. It's, 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 it's an experience like no other. And it's, I guess the closest thing you could say, it's, it's like being at spring training with how close you are and how intimate that, that feel is. How often would you like to play the game? I mean, once every two years, three years? You know, I think right now, I think the plan is maybe every three years or so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we kind of, we, we do have to share the team a little bit with our, our AA affiliate in Springfield, Missouri. They're probably due up next. Um, and then there are from time to time, you know, like the couple years ago where the Cardinals were asked to open Marlins Park um, and some things in there that, you know, sometimes Major League Baseball has plans for some, for some teams as well. Um, but I think every several years we want to keep it a novelty. We want to keep it as something that's not expected every year, um, but yet it becomes a special event when they do come to town. Of course, this year was the added bonus of the refurbishment of uh, AutoZone Park. So getting back to a Randall Gritchick or one of the players that's now with the parent team that has played in Memphis over the last couple of years, what were their thoughts when you talked to them about the changes when they looked around and, and saw the improvements to AutoZone Park? Well, a number of those players were here last year, and even though we didn't play the game, you know, they came out and took batting practice and stuff, and they saw the field. Um, when they came out, I, it was this amazement. You know, one of just they saw mostly the playing field and the things sort of around it. The field is amazing. It is, you know, it, it reminds me of Bush Stadium. It's sort of cut the exact same way, the way the field is laid out. Um, it, it's it's flat, you know, you roll a ball, it rolls perfectly flat now. Um, the players were beyond thrilled. They also actually enjoyed uh, the new video boards. 
you know, that it just kind of provides a different dynamic, but they were like, this place looks great. You know, many of them have never been inside of the other areas of the ballpark. Right. You know, they, they're always confined to the clubhouses and everything else, but they just, even just looking around, they notice the changes. Um, and a lot of them asked a lot of questions. What's that up there? What's that up there? Um, and just kind of walking through, they were, they were just really impressed by how things had changed in just one year. You had a dress rehearsal, actually you had two, with Memphis playing college games in there with the new turf. How well did that go, and was it a sigh of relief knowing that, you know, the turf wasn't cutting up, it wasn't all over the place where you had to do a lot of work in preparation for the start of your season? Yeah, we actually felt really good about the turf. Um, whenever we put it down, it was about uh, 10 days, two weeks or so before the first University of Memphis game. We actually brought in a thick-cut sod. Um, it was cut a little bit thicker than normal. Um, it was a similar cut that we had used in St. Louis a couple of years ago when they had the college football game and started the playoffs about a week later. So we felt really good that we were going to be able to play on it. Um, you know, we really it was more of just getting all the other things done, you know, of making sure that, that you know, the outfield wall was finished where the new video board was. Right. You know, there was... 24 hours before that game, they were still putting up the fencing that goes in front of that video board. So um, that was a little more of the things of the other things of seeing how much we could get done. And then, as you said, to turn that into a dress rehearsal, it was important to try and get as much done that we could use those boards and begin to play with them a little bit because they take programming. You work out some of the bugs and the kinks, and sometimes things don't always work the first time. You were wearing a hard hat often during the winter. In fact, you took us and, and other stations, lo local media outlets, on a tour a few times mm -hmm. during the renovations. Now that they're finished, how happy are you and how happy are your bosses in St. Louis? You know, I think everyone is beyond ecstatic on it. Um, it was more than what any of us could have envisioned. Um, I took John Mosellock through on Friday, um, and he you know, went into certain areas and said, this exceeds everything that I imagined it could wow. have been. Wow. Um, I, I think that you know, it's, it was always hard for us to go through, even when we brought the media out to look at it, to show the drawings, to show these renderings that were there, because the pictures just can't do it justice. You know, when people walked around the corner for the first time into the new club upstairs, or they walked into the all-inclusive club, or just walked out to the field and saw the new video boards, you saw, like, just mouths hanging open and just smiles and, and stuff. Um, I, you know, we're extremely pleased with them. Uh, I think the folks in St. Louis l love it as well. They, they've, you know, you know, as I said, Mo was just, he was thrilled. Um, most importantly, it's, it's the fans, and, and the fan reaction was outstanding after Friday night. Craig, what, were the what was the general goal of the renovations? Just to modernize the stadium, or was it to cut down on some of the seats? Give me the general idea of why you wanted to make these, these changes, these renovations. Well, I kind of roll all of those things into one simple thing, is to say that we wanted to improve the fan experience. And, and the fan experience is, is it's a whole number of things. It's everything from the food, it's from, you know, we, we classify the fan experiences from the time you park until the time you get back to your car. Everything inside there is part of your fan experience of coming downtown, coming to downtown Memphis and being at AutoZone Park. You know, so for us it was, you know, looking at all of those things. Um, and, and some of the fan experience was making the ballpark feel a little more intimate, mm -hmm. of bringing people right. closer together. Even being at, at the University of Memphis games over the past, you know, couple of weeks, and they played Mississippi State, uh, you know, just the other day, that having 3,000, 3,500 people there, it felt like a baseball atmosphere. It felt like that there were people there. And that's really what we wanted to create was this, this, this setting that when you have five or 6,000 people at a game, which is a, a good crowd on a weeknight for minor league baseball, that it felt like the stadium had some energy, that there were people there. Before, the stadium felt half empty. Um, you know, so it was it was upgrading the fan experience, upgrading the amenities. Up, it, the stadium did need updates. It was it was outdated in a lot of areas. Um, you know, so it was updating that stuff. But with that, it was to make sure that the fan experience was also enhanced. Along those lines, and aside from the aesthetics, the the beauty of the park, as you can see when you just step into the park, the changes. What other changes will the fans see going to a ball game this year, going to AutoZone Park? Well, I think over time, um, you know, we've spent a little bit of time this year on customer service, on just little things. We have a new concessionaire this year. Um, it's kind of that's kind of flown under the radar a little bit with all the other changes. So, you know, they're going to see um, some new food items 
at the ballpark. They're going to see sort of a rebranding of all the concession stands, which one, we noticed this one of the first nights when University of Memphis was there that we were able to spread out the concourses a little bit, where in the past, you know, most of your hot dogs and your barbecue nachos and the things that are sort of the staples at a ball, at a ball game at AutoZone Park were always kind of crammed right behind home plate. We began to spread those things out and add hot dogs in some other areas. Um, adding the barbecue stand out in right field spreads that out for, as a destination area for people to go get barbecue nachos. We think in the past, I think there were two stands. We now have four places where you can get barbecue inside the ballpark. I think it's those little things. You know, it's, it's, I think people always kind of look at, at, at the big, big changes, right. but there's also these little things in there just to make sure that we make that experience as, as, as easy and as simple as it can be, some of them you may never even notice it, that it's been upgraded, but you go, hey, you know what, I didn't wait in line as long as I did before. Um, or there's more choices, or there's more kid-friendly things, or you know, there's items that on the menus that prices went down on some things. So you know, those are all things that, that we do um, just to keep that experience high. I know you interact a lot with the fans, whether it be on social media, in person. Do you heed their advice a lot of times, or at least their recommendations, and take that into consideration? Absolutely. I, I, you know, we we at least think about it. You know, and there are times that there are things that you you can't always implement, or maybe you can't implement right away. But we, we always look for for the fan feedback. Um, we don't have all the answers. We never pretend to. Um, now we've, you know, obviously we've operated St. Louis, we've operated Springfield, Missouri. We have a pretty good idea, but things are different at, at, at AutoZone Park. It operates, the ballpark operates differently. The fans interact a little bit differently. Um, you know, I always describe the stadium as sort of its own living organism. And <laughs> as it gets, you know, as the crowds get bigger at night, or on different nights, the, the building operates differently. Right. So, you know, and, and people from St. Louis have come down operationally and looked at the way we do things, and they've taken things back to St. Louis and said, we've never thought of that before. Um, it, it is. I think all of those things, you know, we, we, we took one suggestion this year uh, or last year and we implemented it this year is we now scan tickets on the inside of the building. In the past, you were out at the, what we call the outer gates out by the box office. Right. Well, what was happening were, you know, fans on a Friday and Saturday night, they're getting down there early, they're excited to come to the game. They were spilling out into the street. It's a very small concrete pad. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do this year is the plaza is now open. It is open until from 8 o'clock in the morning Very nice. all the way through game time. So if you want to come down and enjoy the band before the game, you don't, you're don't. you not going to be isolated on this little island. And once you come in, we'll scan your tickets once you actually enter into the ballpark. And now that sort of creates that plaza as a, as a gathering place and, and, and a park even right there in Memphis. I, I think it's a very good move. Let's talk about the on-the-field product. New manager in Mike Schilde takes over after a lot of success in the organization, most recently in Springfield. The Iowa Cubs starting tonight. Great first series against uh, the young Cubbies, soon to be with the parent team, with Chris Bryant and company in town this weekend. But your team, the product that you will have on the field this year, how competitive? I think they're going to be good. You know, when we kind of got the final rosters and kind of knew who was going to be there, I mean, you look at, at, I think you look at the starting rotation and you look at some of the guys that Strong. are in there. There are guys that are, you know, having Marco Gonzalez down here, you know, Marco's pitching with a chip on his shoulder thinking he should be in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, Cooney is, is, is great. Tyler Lyons spent a lot of time going back and forth. You know, you've got a lot of guys that are big league quality in that rotation. And then you start to get into the field. And Xavier Scruggs, you know, spent some time with the big club at the end of the year last year. Stephen Piscotti being in, you know, some of the top five uh, of all the prospects, um, you know, for, for the team. I think there's a lot, there's high expectations for this team. I, I know, I know Schilte is, is excited about it too, that, you know, he's followed a lot of these players through the system. And they're familiar with his system and what he expects out of his players and stuff. But uh, I think we're going to be competitive. Um, the biggest challenge for us is we just don't know how long you have some of these guys um, and your, your roster is always in flux. Then again, as, as we know, these are the stars of tomorrow. Not all of them will turn out to be superstars, but there may be. We remember a guy named Albert Pujols when he was with the Cardinals starting in Memphis with the Redbirds. So to get out and to see some of these young prospects now, it may not uh, you know, click right away that you're seeing maybe a star of the future, but that's exactly what you're seeing in minor league baseball. I, I think that's the beautiful thing about minor league baseball is that you sometimes you even have what you would consider some of the people that are not misses and people come out and see, and what they miss sometimes are the people that exactly what you said, that 
you, you may not know their name and you come to the game and then all of a sudden they go up to St. Louis. They make an impact. They become a player. Um, you know, I think there's always those guys that are the, you know, the, the top five, top ten prospects. Um, but you, you do. You start to look around at the rest of the, of the team and you start to see guys that make impacts every day. Um, it, I think it's great that when you know, fans get a chance to come out and see these players develop, they get a chance to see them, and you know, we try and make them accessible. We're going to do more things this year to try and make the players more accessible and um, you get them out in the community more often and get a chance to know them because we want to build that affinity with Memphis, with the fans, that they go, yeah, I, I knew this guy, or I, I, got to, I got an autograph for, from them, or got a chance to talk to them before the game one day. So when they go up to St. Louis, the stage is just so big that you, there's just nothing like that. You came here, became the general manager of this team when the changeover was made, when the Cardinals purchased the Redbirds, and now everything's run through St. Louis. So you weren't here before that, but I would imagine there's a big difference now with the Cardinals running the show and not having in-betweens. Um, is there any way to explain that to the folks about this great working relationship between a parent team and the minor league teams they own? You know, I think probably... Um Sort of the best way, it's, well, I guess one thing is there's so many streamlined processes that just make things easier for us. Um, there's also, you know, marketing opportunities that we can tie in together. You know, having, having the radio broadcast down here the other night, getting a chance to sit down and talk to John Rooney um, and, and um, uh, Mike Claiborne for a while. You know, they're like, we're going to plug Memphis. You know, that's... That's a relationship that typically doesn't happen when a team is not, you know, maybe doesn't have that great relationship. You with, almost feel with like you're obligated club. to do it, right? Well, I, you know, I, I, I don't think there's really anything that anybody says you have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think that as part of the Cardinal thing is we're a family. And the family is, it's the big club, it's here, it's Springfield. And, you know, as I mentioned before, it's, it's as simple things as operationally. You know, having people come down from St. Louis, um, we'll, we'll have people that'll, you know, go to Springfield this year to observe some games. We're going to take our staff up to St. Louis to let them, one, watch a game, understand kind of what the Cardinals are all about, but then also, two, shadow their counterpart in St. Louis. Now they make a connection with that. They get someone who understands kind of what they're doing. When they run into a problem, they can call someone who does their job, Makes who understands what they're doing. And that's things from, you know, season ticket sales to group sales to sponsorship sales to operations. Yeah, it's, it's building that family, and we're all striving for the same thing, and that is to win world championships. All right, final minute or so. I know you've lined up probably some great nights of promotion. Give us a little taste of what fans can expect to see going to AutoZone Park this summer. Well, I, I think our, our number one thing that people look forward to every year is fireworks on Saturday nights. Um, you know, when I first came down here, I couldn't believe the fireworks shows that were put on um, after the game. The fireworks are shot right from the middle of center field. Um, it, is, it is one of the coolest shows. Um, people from St. Louis came down. They do fireworks after some games, and they're like, this show is unbelievable. Um, Friday night block parties, two-hour gates, um, $2 draft beers before the game. You know, that's always a big draw. We're going to have some great bands out in the plaza uh, for people to go to. Something new this year that we are just now announcing is dollar hot dog night on Tuesday nights. I like it. So to come in, get the fans down, and eat as many dollar hot dogs as you can. Um, and then we'll have some other sort of theme nights on those weeknights, you know, sort of to be announced coming in, in the, the in really near future. All right, as far as uh, purchasing tickets, how can uh, fans go about doing that? Yeah, it's really easy. The best way to do it is memphisredbirds.com. Um, go on there. You see all the options. You really get a chance there as well to look at all the different options of tickets. We are a new all-inclusive club. Um, you, can, you can go on there, learn all about that, what's included in there. Um, it's a great value package in there. You can learn about the clubs, and uh, you actually get a discount if you buy your tickets in advance. So save yourself a little bit of money, buy your tickets in advance online, and also you know, print your tickets at home that way, too. You don't have to stand in line at Will Call. On the website, can you actually see visually the, the seats? Do you have that on the on the website? There, there is not an actual of uh, that. We, we, there is rolling out this year where you can see sort of the view from the seat. Right, that exactly. At. Yeah, and that was something new that was rolled out this year. That there's some pictures taken on there. So when you click on, you know, the section that you might want to sit in, you get an idea from from the web what your view is going to be. But I can tell you, there's not many places in the ballpark that you don't go, man, this is not a very good view. I wish I was sitting someplace else. All you know? good views. Yeah. We we uh, are so excited. We know. Uh, 
the changes have been made that are just going to better the product, an already terrific product. Craig, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Looking forward to a great season from the Redbirds and you folks and your visits to AutoZone Park. We'll take a break. Overtime is next. Well, we're not done talking baseball just yet. As you know, the Cardinals were in town last Friday to face the Redbirds in an exhibition game at AutoZone Park. Now, despite some threatening weather earlier in the day, the game drew a terrific crowd as the big league Cardinals beat their AAA affiliate 8-1. The Cardinals are coming off a 90-win season in 2014 in which they won another National League Central Division title, took down the favorite L.A. Dodgers in the divisional round of the playoffs, but lost in the NL Championship to eventual World Series winner, the San Francisco Giants. This season, the Cardinals are once again a favorite to win the NL Central title. Former Brave slugger Jason Hayward is now in the Cards lineup, and John Lackey, who was acquired late last season, re-upped with the Cards and is now part of a star-studded pitching rotation. We were able to catch up with some of the Cardinals when they were in Memphis last week and talk to them about their expectations here in 2015. Winning a World Series every year, that's the mentality. You know, this organization has been has been great for years and years, and um, I think we use such a family environment that, uh, you know, we all accept winning, and that's all we want to do. You know, if, if, if that takes, you know, you making it now to advance a runner to score that run, um, you know, we're all for it, you know, anything to get the W. This is our job. Our job is to come ready to go every day and try to win games. I mean, if we don't have that mind, I mean, they're in the wrong place. I mean, that's the attitude that we have. I mean, you have to come here ready to go and try to win uh, the game that, that day. You know, don't, don't, don't concentrate on other stuff. Just try to win the game. For us to be successful at the major league level, we need players coming from here that are not only productive, but they have long-term production and, and, and being a part of that. So when you look at, at what we've been able to do from a developmental standpoint, not only here in Memphis, but also Springfield, it's really allowed us to be quite uh, opportunistic, if you will, at the major league level and not having to survive or live in the free agent market. We do have a high level of confidence on what this team looks like, and we were able to accomplish what we needed to this spring, got a lot of work in. I felt like uh, Mike and his staff did a tremendous job of, of keeping everything moving, and you know, here we are, we're 48 hours away from uh, opening night, and you know, we're excited about that. Ron Warner and, and uh, Mark Budowska and Brian Neversger have done a terrific job of uh, not just preparing guys uh, to get to the big leagues, but be able to seamlessly join in what we're doing already. And, and to have guys that are coming in and they're not scared, they're, they're ready. They know the system, they know what we're asking of them, and uh, they're doing a, a great job all the way through our, our organization. And, and now with uh, Mike Shield here, Mike's a special, special baseball guy. And uh, I know he puts a huge amount of time into uh, helping the, all these players, not just on the baseball side, but also help grow them as men. Aside from the baseball season getting underway, early April provides for a smorgasbord of sports. The Grizzlies are down to four regular season games before the postseason begins, and they still aren't sure who they will open up the playoffs against. After three road games, the Grizz will play their regular season home finale next Wednesday against Indiana. The college basketball season came to an end earlier this week with Duke knocking off Wisconsin for the men's title and UConn capturing another women's crown as they top Notre Dame. Spring football is coming to an end for area teams over the course of the next few weeks. The Memphis Tigers will put a wrap on their spring campaign tomorrow night with the annual Blue-Gray game at Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. And we'll have much more on that on next week's show. 
The Mississippi River Kings have reached the Southern Professional Hockey League President's Cup Finals after taking down Pensacola in the opening round two games to one. The Kings will face the winner of the semifinal series between Knoxville and Louisiana. And finally, the Masters got underway today at Augusta National. Tiger Woods is playing, but most of the experts feel his two-month layoff will be too much to overcome. The chic pick is Jordan Spieth. Rory McIlroy is going for the career Grand Slam, and Bubba Watson is looking to repeat. My pick is a guy who has contended but has never won a major tournament, Australian Jason Day. And that'll do it for now. Remember to view any of our previous Sports Files programs. Simply head to our website at WKNO.org. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.